Hello and welcome to Dingo's Ate My Podcast. I'm Paul. I'm Dave. And I'm Justin. And this time we're doing a little epilogue on the series as we finished last week. Mm -hmm. So um, why don't we start off with a simple question that you can totally get wrong and I will punish you if you do. Yeah, knowing you, I'm not surprised. What's your favorite character? Willow. That's a correct answer. (laughs) It was hard to get wrong. It is pretty... Well... I mean, you could choose Xander. He's not a bad character, but he's also, you know, not Willow. This is true. He is definitely not Willow. And therefore, (laughs) he is not as good. As it is with all the particular characters of the story, it's amazing all the development and sections that they have. Buffy is great as a main character with all the stuff that she goes through. But when it does come for any particular favorite character... Yeah, just hands down, it has to be Willow. Just all the stuff that she goes through introduction-wise, her arcs, and just the story she goes through. It's just incredible. But as it sort of stands, all the characters have their pluses. Even Giles, with all the stuff that he goes through. Oh, yeah. Giles is pretty great. Giles is amazing. Like, there's no char- there's no main character that I think I dislike. Like, they're all really likable. Pretty much. I think, honestly, as it sort of sits on the low end, would probably be Anya, just with her introduction and her mannerisms with things. It works for the story, but it just had that little bit of cringe where I was like, eh. Yeah, but Anya's really funny. So very true, but there were still kind of points of, eh. I mean, that's kind of like the character, though. Like, she's meant to be kind of cringy. She's... But then, of course, there is Andrew. There is Andrew. Andrew exists. He's not really a main character, though. Yeah, I mean, he joins the Scoobies sort of at the end or whatever, but that's like... And he's still like... I still like Andrew. I mostly, th- I think I, we'd mostly throw that up to the Glorious God section within that episode. He did kind of murder his friend, though. Yeah. I understand that. Why are you my friend? I don't know. <laughs> Such a fantastic question, but we don't have the time. Anyway. Um, Alright, so why don't we go through and rank uh, the seasons from best to worst. So David, why don't you start us off with that? As it is with just everything with all the couple of seasons, they kind of have their arcs. Starting with season one kind of is a beginning to things giving you an idea of the story, and it has a couple crazy, silly ideas in and there. it wasn't a great season at all. It has some great episodes. It, it has, has a few, but it's not where I would say the show shines brightest. It's, Definitely not. It's a way to get started and move on with the concept. Mm-hmm. As it sort of goes on, as it is with a best season, though, I... Don't have it exactly within my notes, but I'd say around, I believe, season three or four, around the time when there was the switch in Angel's character to Angelus, kind of Mm. going from that story and that switch up with things. So that happens happens in, like, the middle of season two. Oh, okay, more season two. It's funny with... No, I sort of see it with that sort of concept as... It brings in most of the characters that were introduced, kind of gives the best sort of story things, and gives a bit of an ending to where you don't know how the season is going to go. And as it sort of goes along, you kind of sort of find, eh, they were trying to find things to work with with that. They really find their footing in season two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because like season one is kind of like, it's a bunch of standalone episodes with kind of an overarching narrative. Mm -hmm. Season two is very much, there is a, a strong overarching narrative Mm -hmm. with a few, like, one-offs here or there. And I think, again, with the start of Season 3 to sort of build things up from that, but even to then, after that sort of point, it just sort of follows along trying to keep the story going, and, oh, once Buffy was brought back, Well, yeah, I mean, I like... Oddly enough, the way I ranked the seasons was kind of odd. Okay. Because I basically listed it as... I'm waiting for you to finish your drink. 
the one where Buffy dies again. <laughs> the one so where the Buffy so, stops being dead again. So that's season five and season six. Yeah, so those are those are like ranks as my high up seasons, and the other one was the one where they um, basically finished high school with like the mayor being um, the villain of that season. So that's season three. Yeah, mm. season okay. three was a really good season. Okay, mm. so I listed them uh, season two being the best. Because I think the show really finds its footing there, and it mm-hmm. has the really great Angel Buffy story. Mm-hmm. And especially episodes like Surprise and Innocence, I think, are really, really good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, followed by season six, which is obviously the darkest season. Yeah. And the least happy. Mm-hmm. And nothing good happens. But mm-hmm. I love that it's an entire season that's just kind of, like, dealing with, like, mental health issues and mm-hmm. things like that. And I think it's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, followed by season five which has some amazing episodes in it, and Mm -hmm. they literally fight a god. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Season three comes in kind of in the middle. There's some good stuff in it, but I think overall there's also parts that just don't work for me. Mm -hmm. We do get Faith introduced, though, in that season. Yeah, Mm -hmm. you got Faith. Mm -hmm. You have to have Faith. Uh, Season seven comes in below that. Um, There's parts of that season where, like, it's just kind of muddled. Yeah, it's uh, kind of a winding. There, yeah. It's a winding down sort of season to sort of finish up the story from how they have it with how things were kind of going. So it's definitely understandable. Uh, below that, I have season four. Um, there's a lot of things wrong with season four. <laughs> yeah, was that yeah. the one with beer bad and all that? Uh, I I want to say yes, but that might have been season three. Uh. No, that would have been... Yeah, that would have been season four, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. Uh, let me just pull up the episode list here. Yes, that season four has Beer Bad. Mm. It also has some amazing episodes, like, though, like Fear Itself. Also, Hush. Hush? And Hush, It was a yeah. really good one. Actually, I would rank that fairly highly. It also does suffer from having characters like Riley in it. Oh, mm. yeah, Riley. Riley is just kind yeah. of there. A lot of the time. I had to kind of remind myself that was a character now. (laughs) Yeah. Mm. Uh, And then season one, I would put at the bottom. Yeah, I understand. Because while there are a few really good episodes, there's a lot that's just filler. Mm. Filler and, like, I really did not like, like... You really hated the The Hyena episode. The pack. Mm. The pack. (laughs) I, I I still say that uh, I Robot Eugene is worse. I liked that one better. The thing was, I was trying to like Xander at the time, I guess, and then <laughs> that episode did not help me. <laughs> mm, fair enough. Mm. Alrighty. So, what were your top five episodes? Justin, why don't you start us off with your top episode? Your favorite episode from the series? Or episodes, like if it's a two-parter. I mean, probably The Body... Obviously, okay. that one was just straight up, it was a different formatted episode, but it worked so damn well. Mm-hmm. So that's obviously the top spot. Okay. Um, and a lot of my other choices are kind of here and there, because I can kind of remember some episodes and not as much some other ones, but like, obviously I want to put Hush in there, because mm-hmm. I really like those... Uh, that villain, and it was a kind of a silent episode, which was different. I loved that one. Yeah, I love how Hush is written as a response to the critics who are like, oh, this show has really great dialogue. <laughs> I'll show you. Yeah, it was very well written. <laughs> Despite the lack of uh, vocal dialogue. Um, and then there's obviously the complete opposite, the uh, musical episode. Once where, More With Feeling. Yeah, Once More With Feeling. Where it's basically everything is a musical. That one was brilliant. And my other choices were kind of the Halloween episodes, like uh, Band Candy and Halloween. Yeah, okay. Those are both very fun episodes. They're fun episodes, and I like watching those. Fair enough. David? Um, I don't know if that was five or not, but... I think you went through five. I did. Because you pretty much oh, mirrored almost all of my five. <laughs> But I have a few different ones in there, so David, why don't you go ahead? Honestly, most of the picks that Justin brought up were fairly good, though I did try to work with 
particular episodes that kept with the story had a little bit of punch to it. The title escapes me, but the one where they had the interaction with the first Slayer through a spiritual experience. Oh, uh, I think it's called like Primeval or something. Something like that. Restless. Restless. Because Primeval's the but episode before. Just the particular scene when Giles is on stage and performing with things. Willow uh, and Xander yeah. waving the candles. That is good. Just that sort of experience. But I think with my top episode. I can't remember all the particular details, even the title, darn my bloody notes, is with the episode with uh, Angelus killing... Uh, Miss Calendar? Miss Calendar. Ah, with all so that's that. an episode just, called Passion. Just following with the story, going with such the change up with what happened to Angel to Angelus and just... Oh man, this is our big bad and something we'll have to deal with within the story. Is this how I m- remember Miss Calendar more than I do Riley? No, because no, her Ms. character Calendar has a better really ending, at least. Yeah. Plus, it has that one particular joke that drives Paul nuts. Oh, oh I, the yeah, the techno pagan or whatever mm. that was called. <laughs> really hate that. <laughs> it's stupid. Okay, so my top five. Uh, in rough order, although this order could change in five minutes. Yeah. Uh, number one, I put surprise slash innocence, because that's a two-parter, and you can't really take those two apart. Um, for those of you who don't remember, those are the episodes where um, that's the ep- time when Angel switches to Angelus. Mm-hmm. Right now. Uh, followed up by The Body, mm-hmm. which is... I mean, we're on a super happy tear here. Mm-hmm. Um... Followed by the Zeppo, which uh, is the Xander specific episode. Ah, uh, yes. Where Xander gets to sort of be a hero. And uh, yeah, that would be an episode where I was like, yeah, Xander's a great character. Yeah, he is. Uh, followed by Hush, mm-hmm. because the gentlemen are amazing. Mm hmm. And uh, rounding out the top five was Once More with Feeling. Ah, uh, Because yes. I love the musical episode, because mm-hmm. it's so mm-hmm. good. Alrighty, so was there anything uh, kind of about the series that surprised you? Uh, like when you went in, like what you expected it to be and what it turned out to be. Was there anything that kind of surprised you or anything? I, um, I did have a base understanding of most things that sort of went on. I think mostly just a case with the couple episodes that you sort of, oh man, these particular things are coming up. I sort of thought it as one thing when... It wasn't as bad as you supposedly made it out to be, but nevertheless, they hit on particular issues that are like, you could probably show this to someone as a decent example of something to express those certain feelings on having to deal with particular feelings or having to deal with death and those sorts of things. Okay. Justin, is there anything that jumps to mind? Uh, Dave was kind of hitting the points. Nothing terribly surprised me too, too much. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of like I... Hmm. Okay. I don't know. Uh, so, obviously nothing surprised me because I had seen it before. Well... A few times? Yeah. Like Any particular that. experience from your past that you specifically remember? I think there was one that you told us about. Remember the, the Fishman episode? The, yeah, that you had. The a, yeah, the episode Man that episode. I saw when I was really young and made me not want to watch Buffy because it was too scary. Yeah, yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah. That was a thing that happened when I was like seven. <laughs> but aside eight. from that, no other sort of episodes affect you from previous watches that you could remember? Uh, I mean, yeah, there are a few. Like, obviously, The Body. I mean, mm-hmm. I still have a hard time getting through that episode. Mm-hmm. It like it's a forty-four minute episode, and it takes me two hours to watch it. Because mm-hmm. you probably have to stop. And I have to stop every five minutes. Yeah. And walk away from the TV and like, okay, I need a minute. Mm-hmm. Where's my box of tissues? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and I still maintain that the body is is one of those things that you could take into like a high school English class and be like, and, and Actually, do a lesson on that. Mm. Actually, um, jumping back to what surprised me, I guess, um, the episode prior to The Body, when Buffy just gets home. Oh, yeah, where it yeah, leads right in. It leads right in. That was, like, a good, like, just a 
snap segue into the next episode for the most part. Yeah. It that was a really good one. Yeah, that is really well done. Um what other episodes would have like been something for me? Um I think the episode that kind of like so I watched Angel before I watched Buffy, like in oh, its okay. entirety. Oh, yeah. hmm. Uh, and I watched Buffy because, like, I'd watched Angel. I'm like, oh, I really like this. I'm going to try Buffy. Mm-hmm. Other than, like, the episodes I saw when I was really young. Mm-hmm. So I think the episode that really made me love the show was Prophecy Girl, mm-hmm. which is the season one finale. Ah, uh, yeah. season huh. one is pretty fucking rough, mm-hmm. except for, like, the first two episodes. And then mm-hmm. there's Angel in the middle of the season, and then there's Prophecy Girl. Angel was just kind of there yeah. in season one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think the episode Angel doesn't work because you know who Angel is. Mm-hmm. I think if you go into that episode as a viewer who doesn't know anything about the series, that episode is way more effective. Mm-hmm. Because that's the one where they reveal that Angel's a vampire. Which we don't know up to that point. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and Prophecy Girl, just the whole... The, the thing that really got to me there was like... This, Buffy has this whole speech where she's like, I'm 16 and you're asking me to go die. Mm. And, like, that's a really cool moment that I think is really, uh, is really underrated in the series. Mm-hmm. Okay, did either of you have anything else you wanted to bring up about Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Willow's best character? Willow's <laughs> best character. In all of her moments, because she's just the most dynamic character in the entire series. And she's the best character arc. Yeah, mm-hmm. really. She's the most interesting stuff to do. Mm-hmm. Like, she goes from, you know, the typical high school, high school nerd, to nerd being like, friend, to a witch, to... To being the most powerful person on the planet, To having a werewolf boyfriend, to, uh, I guess, becoming a lesbian, somehow. Um, and then just turning to the dark side. And then recovering from it. Well, she does play a guy. Yeah. That tends to make you rethink your life choices. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no matter what, just the entire Scooby crew has those particular moments. And the series wouldn't be what it was without one of them within the group. Even Xander. Xander has his moments to shine, despite being few and far between in comparison to Buffy and Willow. Yeah, no, they each have, like, their role within the group, right? So, like, Mm -hmm. Buffy is the strength, Willow is kind of, like, the brains, and then Xander's the heart. Hmm. So, the Triforce. Yeah. yeah, but that's Zelda. I don't really like Zelda. <laughs> or some other triad thing that history has somewhat. But wait, then I'd be comparing Buffy to Ganon. I mean, it depends. Well, well from one does... perspective, she is a villain. Like, if you're a vampire. Yeah, I guess, but... <laughs> she does technically have a demon inside her. Yeah, mm. that is true. Oh, well, at least Ender gets to be Link. <laughs> <laughs> then who's uh, then who's Willow? Willow would Willow most likely uh, be the wisdom, right? Zelda. Zelda. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that oddly works in a kind of sense, though. <laughs> I know. Well, no, but there's no way Xander can be Link because Xander isn't very adept at anything. <laughs> Link is at least meant to be like capable. Xander's like capable, and well, he's sort of capable, but he's not really in combat. Mm. I guess he's more of the uh, handyman who fixes the house every now and then. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, when they crash through a window or something to break a <laughs> table. He's like, well, I fixed this table ten times already. I'll you know what? Again. You know what? Forget putting it in the window. Just leave it boarded. I mean, makes sense, because, I mean, Sunnydale kind of went... Yeah... Well, there's only there's the one reason that a single mom is able to afford that house. Property values are really fucking low because everybody dies. Hmm. Yeah. From mysterious wounds to their neck. Nah. Alright, so I have a couple of honorable mentions for episodes. <laughs> this was really hard to cut down to five. but f- So for honorable mentions, uh, Welcome to Hellmouth slash The Harvest, mm-hmm. which is the first two episodes. Uh, Prophecy Girl, which ends season one. Passion, which is, well, mm. it's the first episode where you're... Which is Angelus, right? 
That's one where he kills Jenny Calendar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's kind of like the first real punch to the gut. Mm-hmm. Uh, Halloween, just because it's yeah. such a good time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Band Candy, because it's such a good time. Uh, Earshot, because, well, mm, it's not a good time, but it's a great episode. Mm. Uh, something Blue, because it's really funny. Mm. <laughs> uh, Buffy versus Dracula, just because how can you not? Obviously. Uh, the Gift, which is, again, not a happy episode, but mm. is a really good one. Mm-hmm. Also kind of like Graduation Day. Graduation Day is a pretty good season finale. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Um, so I also have Bargaining Parts 1 and 2, mm-hmm. which is where Buffy's brought back in Season 6. Because, mm-hmm. again, happy times. Yeah, that was great. Uh, Grave, which is the end of Season 6. Mm. Mm. Which, again, tons of happiness. Uh, conversations with Dead People. Mm. Uh, Help, which is the Cassie episode. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lies My Parents Told Me, which is the one where we find out that Spike killed uh, Professor Wood's mother. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chosen, which is the series finale. Uh, School Hard, which is the first episode where Spike is introduced. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered, which is an episode most people don't remember, but it's really good because that's the one where Xander makes a love potion. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Oh, the craziness. Oh, and then every woman in Sunnydale wants him. And it's great. <sighs> uh, the Wish, which is the one where they go into that like alternate dimension kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, the Prom, just because uh, it has a great kind of end to the uh, arc of them being in high school and Buffy getting the Class Protector Award. What was that mm-hmm. one uh, Dream Sequence episode like uh, where like Willow was on stage in this one scene? I don't know which and one. And she had like stage fright. I believe that's the one with the first layer. Yeah, with Maybe? them interacting. Because there was also the scene where Xander's like, ooh, piece of candy. Yeah. Ooh, piece of was candy. that the one with the cheese man? I wear the cheese, it does not wear me. Yes. Yeah, okay, that's that episode. That's, that episode. um, um, what's it called? What's it called? Restless. Uh, that was an and, interesting one. And finally, Fear Itself. Uh, yes. Just because... The evil demon ends up being that big. <laughs> Fear itself. <laughs> it's so good. It says actual size. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Alrighty, so do either of you have any final thoughts on the series? One particular one that just came to my mind is, no matter what, you just gotta be careful of them bunnies. I like that being nice stuff. Oh, those little teeth. Um, <laughs> that's a great way that they end with Anya where she's like bunnies <laughs> bunnies <laughs> um I don't know I feel like the season or the series finale could have ended better personally but like it wasn't it wasn't terrible but it was just my own gripe on it I guess I also don't know if they knew it was going to be a series finale at that point I True, mean, they kind of left it open, ended. but um, mm-hmm. th- it just wouldn't take place in Sunnydale because there is no Sunnydale. There's one in Cleveland. Yeah, there's a Hellmouth in Cleveland. Yeah, that's where it would have gone if there was going to be another season, I suppose. Yeah, I don't know if they if they might have known by that point. I know that there was talk of doing a Faith series mm. mm-hmm. um, and a Slayer School series, which both sound amazing. <laughs> Uh, so, what would you guys, out of 10, score the series overall? It's a 10 out of 10 series, I'd say. I mean, actually, not not quite. Maybe 9 point, 9.2 with a few of those hiccups here and there. Like that stupid hyena episode. And the pack. Freaking, like, season 1 I would rank pretty much the lowest. It was not that terribly great. But anything after season 1, mostly was good. Okay. David? In my case, I'd rank it more as around a 8 or a 7. I'm not particularly sure, since there's only been so many series that I've kind of gone through. I'm not completely relating it to it, but it had a couple particular arcs that are similar to another series that I've been into known as Ruby, 
where mm-hmm. they give you an introduction to things and give you an idea of how the story goes. But after a certain point, everything just goes dark. It hits you with all the particular sorts of stuff. Gives you some moments of levity, but the story kind of really goes on from there. And whether or not Buffy kind of gave the series its inspiration for that, I'm not too sure, but it's kind of a case of it gives you an introduction to all these characters and shows you these sort of stories where there are risks but it's nothing too crazy or they can't really handle and then it just hits you with oh man how are they going to survive this stuff oh no this person died my soul is being completely ripped out and all those sorts of cases with when it was released it was it probably is an amazing series but probably some people would just be like i cannot handle this no so as it is for anyone who is interested just with the style of the story, it is definitely a watch. But if you don't have the heart to watch your favorite character suffer through horrible torment and things like that, you might need to go to the softer side of things. But that's like the more interesting parts, I find, mm-hmm. usually. Yeah, True. I True. definitely agree. Like Season 6 especially, I think, is the best season. Or one of the best. Mm. Like the second best. Mm-hmm. Uh, season two also is another season where they just like emotionally torture the lead character, mm. and it's great. <laughs> Which makes me yeah. sound like a terrible person, but I mean, I want to see characters go through these sorts of situations in a way and try to overcome them. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's the thing. I just like I want to see them, but watch them overcome them more mm-hmm. or less if they can. In some cases, some people can't really manage with it, but yeah. Oh, no, I definitely understand people who would, like, have, like, there are episodes of this show that <sighs> are going to be difficult to get through because they are gut-wrenching. <sighs> and they don't kind of, like, they don't sugarcoat anything. Dude, yeah, do you need like, the sugar for this? Get that sugar like Especially with here. the body. It's like, okay, here's a body. Now we have to deal with this. And yeah, and this is now something that's going to be a big change in our lives. In all yeah, lives. and there's no like, oh, and it just hits you right there. Yeah, and there's no like, oh, it's okay. At the end of the episode, we did some spell and brought her back. It's like, no, she's dead. And I mean, there was a vampire or something in the episode, but I mean, eh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to give the audience a little bit of that catharsis. But the majority of that episode is just like, oh shit, what do we do? Mm. And it's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I would probably say like a 9 out of 10. I really like the series. There are issues, especially in season 1 mm. and in season 4, because that's beer bad. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> beer bad is pretty terrible. But also kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, the show isn't without as few hiccups here and there. Yeah, but for the most part, I think it's really good. Mm-hmm. And I think it still holds up fairly well, even though they don't have cell phones. Yeah. So what? <laughs> it's I'm... a product of the time, really. So that's kind of the thing. Yeah, that might have that might have been a joke, Justin. Anyway, so that will wrap up our us going through Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I've been Paul. I've been Dave, and I was Justin. I'm still Justin. No, you're not.